What's up, everybody? I'm Jonathan. Welcome to Worship Matters. Today, we're going to be talking about a good old song that I'm always referencing, To God Be the Glory. Uh, this is a good old Fanny Crosby song. I've, I've known it since I was a kid. You've probably heard it, too, if you've been in the Baptist church life for a long time. Maybe even other denominations, too. I don't know. Never been outside of the Baptist family, so... I wouldn't know what the others if the others are singing it. But before we jump into that, if you're new here, go ahead and subscribe. Uh, give us a like, and uh, if you have any songs you want me to listen to, or you you hate what I've said, <laughs> leave me a comment. I'd love to talk to you about it in the comment or, or in the have a discussion with you, and I'd love to check out any song uh, recommendations you have. Let's jump into this. Here's our worship guidelines. Directional, musically repeatable, theologically sound, the Bob test, artistic license, and congregational versus personal. If you don't know what any of that means, I did a whole video about it. Link will be in the description. Let's jump into this. All right. This is a good old Fanny Crosby, To God Be the Glory song. Let's, let's see. Let's listen to this. Alright, that's verse 1. Notice how awesome whoever put this together was by putting all the words on one page. <laughs> I just, I just, but it is great. Alright, to God be the glory. Uh, great things he hath done. Well, what did he do? So loved he the world. I mean, you could the proper English would be, he loved the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. But for artistic license, so loved he. This is classic hymn rearrangement. So loved he the world that he gave us his son. So that's how much God loved us. He gave us his son. Who yielded, that who is his son, Jesus, yielded his life. As an atonement for our sin. And that opened the life gate that all may go in. So here we have basically the gospel. And the beginning, to God be the glory. So we are directly giving praise to God for the great things that he had done. Namely, that he sent his son to the world as an atonement for us so that we may be saved. One one verse and you have the entire gospel right there and you're directly praising God. Beautiful. Beautiful. This this is what I want, right? Here. Um how how hard is that? It's so easy and it's such a beautiful song. Uh so yeah, we have directional praising of God directly to God be the glory. We have the reason, because of the great things that he has done. So we have a theologically sound explanation of the gospel itself. We could say this easily passes the Bob test, even though there's a lot of he's and who's, and um, the who is the son, the he is God, uh, his son is God. Uh, so which God is it? It's the one that gave us his son, namely, you know, the God of the Bible. So, uh, and which son is it? It's the one who yielded his life, who gave up his life for an atonement for our sins. So passes the Bible test. We got a little artistic license in here, but that's, uh, that's fine. This is poetic. So we'll let it slide. <laughs> it's easy. It's musically repeatable. And, uh, there you go. So first one passes all of the 
uh, worship guidelines just right away. So let's keep going. And we have the chorus. So here's the chorus. Praise the Lord, or hallelujah, hallelujah. Let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the people rejoice. So here we've kind of shifted a little bit. So we're praising the Lord, but we're actually speaking to the audience. Saying, hey, you in the audience, let the earth hear his voice. Hey, you in the audience, you... You should be rejoicing. And then we even more directly talk to the audience. Hey, you, come to the Father through Jesus. So if, if, if you could make the argument in verse 1 that it didn't pass the Bob test, here you go. You have the Father, you have Jesus, the Son. So we have much more direct, clear explanation of who we're talking about, which God it is we're talking about, and which Son. It's Jesus and it is the Father. So we should come to the, to, to the Father through Jesus, that's biblical theology, and for the purpose of giving him the glory. We're giving God glory through Jesus. And again, we have the reason for doing this, because of the great things he has done. And so we're... Even even though we're we're talking to the audience, we are telling we're, we're telling the audience to give glory to God, and so it is calling upon the audience to directly give praise to God. So here we have directly praise, praise the Lord. I consider that directly praising God. The directional uh, hallelujah is a direct praise of God. You're crying out, praise the Lord, even if you're talking to other people here, which is what the chorus is doing. Um, it is calling upon us to give glory to God. So I think it's great. I think it's really good. We've in the first first verse we praise God and then we explain why we're praising God. In the chorus we praise God and we tell the earth, everybody, all the people, you should praise God to through Jesus. Come to the Father through Jesus and praise God. I think that's it's beautiful. Just beautiful. Um, so, I have, <laughs> I knew I wouldn't have any uh, complaints uh, for this part of the song. I, I knew the uh, <laughs> I know this song pretty well. So, uh, just really well done. This is this is the kind of song I think that I I want us to sing. Be singing in the corporate worship because we are directly giving praise to God. We are intentionally worshiping God and we're calling others to do the same, but we're also preaching the gospel to ourselves. We're telling people that they should rejoice. They should come to the Father through Jesus. And we had in verse 1, we have the gospel right here. So, gospel message, uh, calling upon sinners to repent and, and come to Christ and we have direct praise of God. What more can you ask from a song? All right. Verse 2. All right, so, O oh, perfect redemption. So it's talking about our redemption through Christ, and it's perfect. And what is it? It's the purchase of blood. So we have Jesus who shed his own blood for ours, so that ours would not have to be. He paid blood to save us. And so, to every believer, there's a promise of God 
that the vilest, even the vilest offender who truly believes, well, that moment from Jesus, a pardon received. So they, even, even the worst offender against God, the worst of the worst, can be saved if they believe in God. And so um, here we have a, a promise. Hey, you, you think you're bad, you think you're awful. Well, even you can be saved. Why? Because the perfect Redeemer shed his blood. And it is so powerful, so perfect, that even the worst criminal can be redeemed. So, beautiful. And then we have the chorus again. I'm not going to go back over that. And then we have verse 3. This is a really short song. Alright, here we go. Verse 3. Great things he has taught us, great things he has done, and great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son. But purer and higher and greater will be our wonder, our rapture, when Jesus we see. So you could want, like, some might hesitate from the song because of the word rapture, uh, but rapture doesn't necessarily mean the, uh, uh, the, like the rapture in uh, eschatology. Is, is eschatology. Oh, yeah, eschatology. It doesn't necessarily mean that the end of times rapture. Because uh, uh, you could just say we are enraptured with uh, our love for Christ, you know. So I would change the word rapture because I don't, you know, I'm not a, uh, a pre-tribber. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's okay. It's okay. I think the rest of the song is good enough to where I wouldn't really bother, you know, be worried too much. I think, uh, I think the rapture actually better ties with wonder, so that when we see Jesus, we will be enraptured and we will be w in wonder. And so I think that I would just interpret this as the the state of awe that we will be in when we see Jesus. So I, that's how I would interpret this. Um, as a, a non-rapture person. <laughs> but that's, so, you know, I, I can understand people not liking the wording here, but we'll give it artistic license, I guess. Uh, maybe. <laughs> Let me know in the comments what you think. Do you think that we should uh, cut this or, or change the words here? Um, that wouldn't really do anything. Okay. I was going to say, I could look at my hymnals, but I don't think they would have changed the words there. Uh, if they did, I'll I'll leave a comment and say that my hymnals are different, but I think that they all keep this. All right, so here we have a declaration that God has taught us great things, and He has done great things. So again, we're reemphasizing the all the great things that God has done and taught us, and then it talks about how our rejoicing is great through Jesus, and then it talks about this looks forward to this great day when we will see Jesus and our rejoicing will be purer and higher and greater on that day when we see Jesus. What a wonderful thought. One day we're going to see our resurrected Lord coming down to meet us in the air and we will see him as he is and he will set all things right and we will no longer have to be controlled in this evil dark world of sin and uh, we will be glorified we will be resurrected oh i can't wait i can't wait all right and then we just have the chorus again all right let's hop over to our worship guidelines all right <laughs> all right talk about these but we have directional yes it's uh, directing praise to god not every verse is directing in the same way that verse 1 does and uh, part of the chorus does, but that's fine. That's fine. Musically repeatable. Yes, this song's easy. <laughs> Very easy to play, so much so that Baptist churches have been doing it forever. Theologically sound. 
there's that one question about the rapture whether if, if you are not a uh, a pre-millennialist pre-tribber you might have a problem with using the word rapture but rapture is an old word it's not only exclusively used for that so i you know as, as someone who's not a pre-tribber i would just interpret it differently i would talk about it how enraptured we are when we we will be when we see the, the the return of our Savior. So that's how I would I would interpret that. I actually think that that's the 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 true interpretation. I don't think that it's actually meant to talk about the the rapture itself. But I could be wrong, you know. So uh, again, this is it's one of the theological distinctions i think we can disagree on and still you know uh still consider this a good song <laughs> you know i don't need every song to you know pre preach every doctrine that i believe uh you know just the, the 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 core tenets of the faith and you know as a baptist i would wouldn't mind the the baptist doctrines of, of faith you know uh, of the church but some of those uh, like end of times, you know, the debate on uh, Calvinism free will, I don't mind a little bit of variation in there. But I do think that if we're writing for the church abroad, we should be mindful of, <laughs> of those debates. And, uh, yeah, so I, th I think it's fine. I think it's fine. Um, let's see. The Bob test, easy. We have the Father. We have Jesus. I wouldn't have minded if I were, if I were going to change something. I wouldn't worry about rapture. What I would change is I would get the spirit in here. I think that it would be really cool if we could talk about the spirit and his work in our lives. But, uh, yeah. But otherwise, I think the Bob test is fine. Artistic license. Yeah, I'm going to give the, the rapture thing an artistic license. And I think it, there was some wording that was kind of awkward. But it's poetic. So, you know. <laughs> The people in their poetry. <laughs> Congregational verse personal. I think this is a great song for congregation. Uh, so, limit, yeah, there you go. I, I think it's also good for personal. I'll sing this song from time to time uh, just because I, I think it's a great song. Um, so, yeah, let me know what you think. Do you disagree? Are you like, I am enraptured with this song. It is so amazing. Or are you, I am unenraptured <laughs> with this song. It's so bad. I can't believe we're talking about the rapture in song. <laughs> Let me know in the comments. <laughs> I want to hear what you guys say. I, I love this song. I reference it all the time. To God be the glory. This is my example of directly praising God. This is the kind of song that I want. I want us singing songs that directly praise God. And, uh, yeah, so <laughs> those are my thoughts. Let me know what you think, and I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Peace.